Today, I'd like to show you the ancient Spanish monastery located at 16711 West Dixie Highway, North Miami Beach, Florida. Let me give you a history of the cloisters. The construction of the monastery of St. Bernard de Clairvaux was begun in the year 1133 AD in Sacramentia near Segovia in northern Spain. Completed eight years later in 1141, the monastery was dedicated to the Blessed Mother and was originally named the Monastery of Our Lady, Queen of the Angels. Upon the canonization of Bernard of Clairvaux in 1174, the monastery was renamed in his honor. A Cistercian monk and mystic, the founder and abbot of the Abbey of Clairvaux, Bernard was one of the most influential church leaders of his time. Cistercian monks occupied the monastery for nearly 700 years. After a social revolution in the 1830s, the monastery cloister was seized, sold, and converted into granary and stable. In 1925, William Randolph Hearst purchased the cloisters and the monastery's outbuilding. The structures were dismantled stone by stone, bound by, with protective hay packed in more than 11,000 wooden crates numbered for identification and shipped to the United States. Soon after the shipment arrived, Hearst's financial problems forced most of the collection to be sold at auction. The massive crates remained in a warehouse in Brooklyn, New York for 26 years. One year after Hearst's death in 1952, they were, they were purchased by two entrepreneurs for use as a tourist attraction. It took 19 months and the equivalent of nearly $20 million in today's currency to put the monastery back together. In 1953, Time magazine called it the biggest jigsaw puzzle in history. In 1964, Colonel Robert Pentland Jr., who was a multi-millionaire banker, philanthropist, and benefactor of many Episcopal churches, purchased the cloisters and presented them to the Bishop of Florida. Today, the monastery is home to the Church of St. Bernard de Claveau, which has an active Episcopal congregation. The journey begins in a museum and gift shop. The monastery's great story begins in a museum gift shop. Tours are available most days from 10 a.m. until 4.30 p.m. Last admission is 4 p.m. Admission is $10 for adults and $5 for students and seniors. Hymnarium. Over 800 years old, this large hymnarium, a hymnal or a collection of hymns, was hand-painted on lambskin parchment. Juices of berries were used as ink. Spanish strong boxes. These iron-bound strong boxes were used for storing valuables in the 16th and 17th centuries. They have large, complicated locks on the underside of the lid. Knight's Armor, part of William Randall Hearst's collection, the Prussian armor from the late 1600s was made in the style of the Knight's Templar. Family Confessional. The confessional dates from the mid-1800s and bears the royal coat of arms. Pope's Cabinet. This hand-carved walnut cabinet was used by Pope Urban VIII to store his personal clothing. It is decorated with the papal seal and the Barberini family crest, three honeybees and the sun. Spanish hearse. This horse-drawn wagon was used in the early 1600s as a caisson or hearse to take the dead from the church to the cemetery for burial. The hearse featured intricate details such as the ornate spindles which held lace ropes to allow the bodies to slide on and off the caisson. The journey continues through the iron gate to the gardens which lead you to the ancient monastery cloisters and the Saint Bernard de Clairvaux church. The iron gate, originally used at the entrance of a Spanish nobleman's home, the iron gate is hand wrought and weighs over 2,000 pounds. The nobleman's silhouette is shown above at the top. The garden walk. The site was a nursery before the monastery was reconstructed here. Nearly 1,000 plants and trees of various types cover 15 acres. Two medieval pieces are the ram's head pillar and a baptismal font. The statues were donated to the church in the 1970s.
The abbot's chair, located at the far north end of the gardens, was the abbot's seats of authority. The ancient Spanish monastery cloisters are officially listed in the U.S. Register of Historic Places. The South Cloister The monastery was originally dedicated to the Virgin. Above the entrance door is the bar relief depicting Mary is being crowned by angels. She stands above a castle flanked by lions which represent the province of Castile and Leon. On the right as you enter the cloister is a sealed doorway that once led to the dormitory where the monks slept fully clothed on straw mattresses. On the wall are the coats of arms of Saint Bernard. Bernard de Clairvaux was canonized as a saint in 1174, just 21 years after his death in 1153. The monastery was renamed in his honor and the royal coats of arms of King Alfonso VII hangs there. The the courtyard well, the granite well in the cloister courtyard was made from the capital decorative top of a 2nd century Roman pillar. The chapel, the main chapel as used today was originally the monastery refectory or dining hall. The small iron bell outside the entrance of the chapel is the dining bell that was used to call the monks to meal. The original chain and clapper have been lost and replaced. The marble relief on the left east wall of the chapel is a bar relief depicting the visit of the Magi. That was sculpted out of white Italian marble, the three kings are shown offering the gifts of gold, frankincense, and marl to the Christ child. It's dated around the mid-1600s. Telescoping windows. The 12th century stained glass windows above the altar are two of only three known telescopic windows from the medieval period in existence today. On the left side is St. John's vision of the enthroned Christ with seven candlesticks. On the right is the scene from the book of Revelation with St. John writing instructions from an angel. The East Cloisters. On your right as you exit the chapel is a life-size statue of young Alfonso VIII, the grandson of King Alfonso VII. The monastery is completed during his reign. The chapter house. This room had a variety of uses. The intricate design, ribbed vaulted ceiling provided good acoustic for chanting and the monks used it for choir practice. Christ the King statue. This 12th century statue inside the chapter house is said to have been carved by one of the early monks. The small alcove in the wall was used for holy water. The French altar facade is a magnificent soapstone carving that surrounded the niche for the French altar. As you can see, the ancient Spanish monastery is a beautiful place. If you're planning your wedding, the monastery offers three beautiful chapels to choose from. The main chapel, the chapter house, which is a smaller chapel, and the French altar, which is an intimate chapel. The North Cloisters. On the north wall is a shrine of the Virgin Mary carved by an unknown sculptor in Cannes. The modern statue was donated to the church in the 1960s. The shrine itself displays intricate sculpting from the same soapstone as the French altar facade. The north wall of the cloisters was originally shared with the monastery church. This wall made of Florida Ulitic limestone, replaced and shared the walls which still remains part of the church ruins in Spain. In the corner is a life-size statue of King Alfonso VII, who started construction of the monastery as an offering of thanks for a successful defeat of the Moors in a major battle. Considered a tall man, he stood five foot four. The West Cloisters are moral corbels. The north and west walls features a series of corbels decorated with coats of arms from Spanish nobility who contributed to the support or adornment of the monastery or other nearby churches. I hope you enjoyed the tour of this hidden gem, the ancient Spanish monastery. Please leave a comment below, like, subscribe, and share. Now that's Arvind.